Time is a social institution and not a physical reality. There are, in other words, no such thing as time in the natural world, and waters, and mountains, and clouds, and living organisms. There is such a thing as rhythm. Rhythm of tides, rhythm of biological processes, but time as such is a social institution. In the same way that our language is, that number is, that concepts are, and all measurements, inches, meters, lines of latitude and longitude, all those things are, are social institutions or conventions. The word convention, from the Latin convenere, to come together, to agree about something, to hold a convention, and thus, of course, in its deteriorated sense, when we say something, it's purely conventional. That is to say, you needn't take it seriously. Now, of course, are we going to take time seriously? That is the big question. And it depends what you mean. If you don't understand that time is convention, of course you take it seriously. And you are driven by time. Time is money. Time is of the essence. And we do, don't we? live in a culture, or complex of cultures in the Western world, where we are literally driven by time. So even the psychologists have altered the old-fashioned word instincts, and now they call them drives, because there's this feeling, this feeling you're, you've got to make that deadline. There's something there you've got to get to. That something, something's going to happen. Now, the, 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 the constant in the question of time is a circle. Mark down in a 360 or 60 degrees, and that is time, to which we compare all kinds of motions and rhythms. And so the clock is just like a ruler, and is as abstract as a ruler, and should be taken just for that. In a way, it means not, not seriously, because conventions, social institutions, are very valuable. Corresponding to the watch, there is a compass. And that also is a circle, divided four ways, north, south, east, west. The Buddhists speak of ten directions, because they not only have the eight points of the compass, above and below. And in the mythology, they have guardian kings, whose duty it is to guard the ten directions, the cosmic traffic cups. Because it is, after all, all that important that I meet you at four o'clock in the afternoon on the corner of 42nd Street and 5th Avenue. For example, go to a game of some kind. And you know it's only a game if, if, if that's what you understood when you went in. As it progresses and you become more absorbed in the back and forth of the game, your emotions begin to become affected. And you start uh, cheering for one side. And you make a decision if you want to take a part in rooting for the underdog, or something of that kind. And that's what happened to us when we were born. We got into a gaming room. It was only a game. But, but uh, we, we begin to take it all terribly seriously. Each one of us is given a part in the game. They say, this is who you are. This is the way you're going to be. It's not like you to do a thing like that. And this identity is something you have to make because you will amount to something. You are going to be someone. It's because as if uh, it's, it's in the beginning, I suppose, really, that we are nobody. But that, that simply means nobody. It's, uh, it's like you're, you're playing black and I'm playing white. You're diamonds and I'm hearts, or whatever it is, you see. It's important to understand thoroughly the nature of hoaxes. I, I tend to exaggerate. Because if I don't exaggerate, none of you will listen. Because all witches that take a moderate tone of voice, that, that say on, on one hand this and on the other hand that, after all we should realize, should consider all points of view should be taken, one reveres them for their calmness and their mindfulness.
Remember, Willow, my dear, I love you. I'm here for you. But I'm also here for the others.